Hey guys, happy Friday. We made it to Friday. Yes, it's Friday, February 8th, 2019. Uh, we're doing a later in the afternoon show because my schedule got insanely crazy this week. Uh, and I am with the beautiful Marlene Bonzel Justy. All right, she's here. All right, so let us know you can hear us or see us. We are at the Citrus Club. The oh, Yvonne Sandoval is on. Hey, Yvonne, give us a thumbs up, give us a heart. Um, Marlene has been so gracious because I had to move her today. Uh, and so we're doing a 4.30 show instead of Susie Parker, what's up? So any hearts or, we just wanna make, Gert Garman, I miss you, Gert Garman. We need to get together. All right, so we got a, we got a thumbs up. That means they can hear us. Um, happy Friday, welcome to the show. Thank you. And Super excited to so have much. you. All right, so I love the title of the show because the title includes inclusion. Uh, but everybody always wants to know an origin story. They want to get to know a little bit about Marlene. So if you could give them a, a little bit of your background and tell us where you're from, what you do. Perfect. Well, um, first and foremost, thank you for having me Cheers. on the TED show. On the TED show. So Don't you love her accent? It's oh, good. Thank what you. is that accent? Well, I am of Haitian descent. So there it is. Yes, okay, good. I was born in Haiti. So I'm so pleased to be here. Um, as I mentioned, I was born in Haiti, grew up here um, in the Orlando area. Oh, you did? I did. I did not know that. Yes, I came here as I was turning 12. Um, grew up here, went to middle school at Middlebrook, did my high school studies at Manor Evans High School. Oh, you went to Evans? I, I went did. to Colonial. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. What's up, Louie? What's up, guys? I see all your hellos. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. So you are kind of a local. You're only 12. I came here when I was 11, so oh. my wife was born here. Okay. Um, oh, look what Rick said. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Rick. Hello, beautiful person. Hey, Shelly. Happy Friday. Um, but yeah, I, did, I came here when I was 11, and my wife was born here, so she won't let me say that I'm from Florida. I mean, technically, <laughs> I've lived here four times the amount of time I was in New Jersey, which is where I was born. Ah, yes. um, hi, Anna and Mark, what's up? Hi. So you grew up here. Yes. I now, did. did you have a big family? Did you, um, what, what was your life like? How did, how did it bring it to this point? So give right. us a little background. So we actually came on a summer vacation. Um, my family and I we would come every year to visit family members throughout the U.S. And that particular year was when things got somewhat bad, I would say, um, due to political reasons back home. And my parents made the decision. So it was myself along with my three siblings. And we ended up staying here. Uh, so it's been a journey, um, just making it through a whole brand new culture, leaving everything behind, and finding your, a new way um, of what life meant at a very young age, and just pursuing through and pushing through. And did you did you enjoy your life while you were in Haiti? Was it was it a positive experience while you were there? Absolutely, okay. I had you know one of the best childhood when when I share it with others. Um, loved it. We everything was peaceful for, to us. We didn't know of any issues. Um, thank goodness where we were living. Both sure. my parents were with us, and it was beautiful. We we had no problem. And so up. when you come here, yes. even though you knew there was unrest and you were uh, the country was dealing with so much stuff, which Correct. it has on and off. Right. Um, did hey Maxine, did you? Uh, how hard was it to acclimate to? Uh, American system um, was it difficult for you to get through school did you have a lot of challenges uh, what was it like absolutely the challenges came very early on um, as a bilingual as a child being bilingual when you come here to the US you're having to learn a third language so that alone is something that you have to go through and, and find your that's way that's true so what were the first two languages so I speak both Creole and French. So these are the two languages that I... I and are they I, super different or do they have a combination? Super, super oh, different. Okay, okay. Yes, they are. So learning a third language when I came here and starting school, um, finding out that there's certain things that didn't necessarily map out the way that we thought of. And so the, the hurdles started even from a high school standpoint and going into college. Oh, so, so, so what did you do after high school? So after high school, I left and went to Massachusetts. I completed my undergrad there in a town called Fishbrooks. 
And what did you get your undergrad in? In business administration. Okay, so you got it in business, yes. which is great. Why business? Did you want to uh, rule the world? Was there a specific field? Because business admin, you can go a million different directions. You can. Well, very early on, I started to tell you, Ted, I started working um, at a young age. I was 15, going on 16. I got my first job at Eckerd's Drug. Eckerd's. I, I Eckerd's. miss Eckerd's, kind of. I just of. shared my age with you guys. <laughs> you look very young. Um... Thank you. So I started there, and I love the whole customer service, the whole sell aspect of things. Um, so when I decided to do the degree in business ad, I had my eye on becoming a, a sales rep, either in medical sales or some type of business related. So that was perfect for me. And is that what you ended up doing when you got your degree? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the answer. Extent. That's why I asked the question. <laughs> to some extent, yes. I did end up working in medical sales, um, but I ended up getting my, my grad um, degree in healthcare admin. That's what I got mine in. Yes. Did we know this already? We talked about this. No, we did. Uh, mine is in health services or healthcare admin. Yes. My master's degree is. Yes. yes. Yes, and I thought I wanted to run a hospital. God, I was not smart back then. <laughs> um, there is no way I could run a hospital. I'm going to tell you right it's now. Never too late. It's never. Ne <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought maybe too about medical sales. I thought maybe that would mm -hmm. help me because it would give me a real background. Mine cool. had a focus in nonprofits, which is why. I spent a lot of time with nonprofits in Orlando because we had a little thing that we could do with nonprofits back then. Mm, okay. um, so, what did you do when you got your graduate? So, you're like, okay, enough of this pretend work stuff. I got to get a graduate Why? degree. Why? So, you're going to go to school for a few more years. And then, what do you do after that? <laughs> So after that, I was still working in corporate America, um, dealing with still management and different level of management. And then I decided to launch on my own and open MJ Solutions. I did so in 2014. That's right, because she also goes by MJ. So I, I had to figure out like nine names when we got here. <laughs> yes. Um, so MJ Solutions. But how do you go from, you know, you know that's traditional school. You get a you get a, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. Right. Then you're like, hey Alexa, what's up? Um, and then you get you decide, all right, I'm going to go into I'm going to create my own world. Correct. What did that world look like? What is MJ Solutions, or what was the initial thought process behind that? Okay. So at that point, I realized that my circle, my network, were really made out of medical providers and even different firms and different attorneys that will come across that would reach out to me for different type of services. So I created and came up with MJ Solutions as a way to really become a true consultant to those two entities. So what that allows me to do is play the business liaison and provide them business solutions when it comes to those two groups. So that, that has been a blessing. So you, you did that after grad school. Mm -hmm. And then, so how did, how did it work for you? Did you have a lots of headaches <laughs> to be an administrator? I didn't want to do a well, nursing home, but God well, bless you. Not. That's a whole nother world. Um, how did you figure out the, your way through that though? Because it's different when you have a degree, right? You're taught, right. there's all sorts of things you're taught. You learn, you, it's a lot of book learning. What's up, Steve? Right. Thank you for today, you were awesome. Uh, then you become a consultant. Right. So how did you convince people? How did you talk to people? And Because a lot of people out here wanna have their own business, yes. which is what MJ Solutions is, it's your Correct. own business. Correct. How did you figure out how to maneuver through and get people to go, all right, I'm gonna trust you because yeah. I think you have the experience? Well, the first thing is even convincing yourself and be okay with yourself that this is something that I'm out to do. I end up finding myself in my path of professional world finding myself not fitting in, wherein people come to you with different projects or different things to do, and over and over, you either are whatever space that you were filling in or the project didn't necessarily sit well with your level of expertise and what you wanted to do. Right. So I got to the point of knowing that I do have more to offer. I do have a sense of compassion and, and the one-on-one -on -one relationship that I wanted to pour into my clients and in any of my networks that I was dealing with. So you have to have that sense of conviction. So traditional first. business wasn't going to uh, accept that or allow that, because that's what happens. I think when you get in a culture, you get in an environment where there are guidelines and strict stuff and you're not the boss. Right. 
Um, that's right. when you create that opportunity to become the boss. Right. And that's what a lot of people out there are struggling with. Like I every time we have a show like this, people are like, God, I really want to have the courage or the strength like Marlene did. Yeah. And you just have to figure out what your niche is, right? Yes. Did you have a support system uh, that helped you? And how did that work? I did. I mean, I, my husband was really going all for it and I shared it with people who are considered as mentors and again you have to look at your reality at that point you believe that you are something that you can create you can provide it's not just fluffery right and you do know that you have people that you can easily go to and get to the ball rolling um, and better way to, to say that and, and just follow that gut it would not I could not do anything beside going for it. At that Correct. Point. And so how did you feel mm -hmm. when you had your first paying client? <laughs> right? Because this is a big deal. I think it people, is. they're so afraid to get that first paying client. They're so afraid people won't value them the way that they think they, they should be valued. Yes. And so you go in and you get that first person that goes, Marlene or MJ, Yes, MJ Solutions is my person, and I'm going to pay you yes. to do the thing you're passionate about. I clearly remember it. So, do so talk guys. about that, because I think people <laughs> need to hear that it does happen, yes. and it really is like a big epiphany. It's a big deal. Absolutely. I mean, we, oh, until that point, everything is ideas, right? Yeah. It's, it's like your wishes, like, okay, this is what I'm able to do. I'm, I'm pretty confident of my craft and what I'm able to provide the solutions I'm able to provide. However, until that, the money, until the deal gets sell, right. you are no. So that day I was with my project manager and we pulled to the side of the road after we left that client and we got out of the car and we just started screaming. Right, you're so excited. <laughs> we were, we were. I mean, it, it felt great. Um, and again, it was just the one piece of the puzzle that we needed just to validate that whatever we had going, whatever I was able to offer, I knew it was something that was going to stick. So one thing that a lot of people struggle with is mm -hmm. they struggle with how to add a monetary value to what they're doing. Yeah. And when you're in consulting, yes. it really becomes this big thing, this empty space of, all right, I've got to figure out right. what's affordable yet worth my time. Right. So what was your process in order to get to that? How did you figure out, all right, these are the price points that MJ Solutions is going to set. Mm -hmm. And then you know it's hard to stick to them when you have somebody that goes, well, that seems a little expensive. Sure. So talk a little bit about your process to get there. Well, it is a blank canvas. And to me, it's a, there's beauty in that. Me too. Um, I love it. <laughs> there you go. So uh, you have to do your homework in whatever industry that you're in. Um, you have to think about the level of expertise that you're also bringing in. I mean, we can both be in the same industry, both providing consulting um, services. However, if I have 15 years of senior level management or whatever experience, don't expect our fees to be the same. Correct. And because what's going to take me uh, a minute to put something together for you, for you might take a week. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so with Correct. that mindset, again, it's all a matter of doing your homework, be confident in what it is that you have to offer, whatever service or product, whatever it may be, and, and be okay with that. Go in, walk in that room, talk to that client as if you're speaking to a friend, and treat them yes. as you wish to be treated, and be very, very authentic in whatever it is that you, you share. Authenticity you is so important. Oh, key. We love you too, Odalis Ramos. Hi. All right, so let's talk, I mean, our topic yes. that we're going to get to right now mm. is about, pretty much about an inclusion. Yes. So talk about why that's important. First of all, define inclusion right. for people because right. it's, I feel like it's a universal definition, but there's a lot of people who have different definitions. So what's your definition and why is that important to you? Right, so I, I even want to step further um, in saying that inclusion to belonging. So when you think of the word inclusion, it's, it's basic, you know, you include it, um, much like you walk in a room, you find the door open, you got in, but when you're there, what happens next? Right. So when you take it from the inclusion steps to belonging, you make it in your own. This is an area or space that you're able to thrive. You are farther than just being accepted, but you are valued. And whatever it is that you're bringing to that table or to that room, to that space, 
it is being accepted and you're allowed to grow and thrive from there. So inclusion, yes. you want most, I, I believe anybody who says they don't want to be included is not being honest. Right. We all want to be included, we want to be accepted, yes. but we're not always. And there are, <clears throat> there's a lot of pain I think in the world yes. because people don't feel included, they don't feel accepted. Sure. So you can also be included, we talk, we've talked about this on the show, you can be included in a, in a circle, but you might not be accepted in the corner. So you mm -hmm. have to really, really uh, make sure that you understand where your value is. Yes. And so being included in the wrong group can be a really bad thing for you, personally and professionally. Ah, so but being included, you've gotta go the extra step. You have, you want, the belonging I think is so critical Absolutely. Uh, because people want to belong. You want to feel like you're part of something. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter what the specific group is, but if that group, if it's important for you to belong, mm -hmm. feel belonging mm -hmm. in that group, then you're going to figure out how to do it. Now that can be bad or good. All right. So how do you advise? Do you advise clients about this? Do you advise people about it? And why do you think it's important in business and relationships? Well, there, there is a step that is required of oneself when you do want to become, belong to any group, and that's become authentic and open up. And one step that, that allows you to go through that door is to share your story, share certain level of your background, and just peel a little bit of layers because people want to like you, they have to like you first to do business with you or to buy anything from you. So Preach. if you're looking to go from <laughs> inclusion to belonging, you have to do that first step. And I think what happens, so we do, we talk about this on the show a lot. By the way, Kendra Pearson hey, says, Kendra. MJ with lots of hearts. Um, I think that, on, especially on the show, we talk about how important that is. How you have to be authentic, you have to be vulnerable, you yes. have to be willing to share your story because you can't come on my show. We were joking about it earlier. Yeah. This isn't QVC. So if you want to if you want to pitch your wares and you want to talk about your consulting business, yes. your whatever it is that you do for a profession, and people don't get to know a little bit about you or feel connected to you, right. you're not going to get the business and people are not going to want to do business with you. Correct. But we're taught to hold everything back. Right. You shouldn't be vulnerable. You shouldn't right. show your quote unquote weaknesses. Yes. So how, when you're consulting with people, how do you address, I would I would bet, I'm gonna guess maybe, yes. men are more difficult to get that across. Oh, I don't know, tell me. Okay, oh, so absolutely. talk about your experience. And that's that. in all cu culture. So Haitian culture, American culture, Hispanic, wherever it may be. So yeah, because they thought that you know, we don't need to share all that. Be strong. Be strong and all that. But then it, 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 and even looking at the society that we live in, we see the change. We see the shift that's happening. And the more people are coming up as being authentic as to who they are, the easier that they're able to attract. You just talked about something earlier as far as when you get into a room, of course, that opens up the door, the inclusion is there, but then are you belonging into that room? Okay. So that's two different things. So Agreed. when you try to find your tribe, and, and that's the place where you actually try, you know, strive, right? When you find that tribe, that the only way you're gonna do that is by being vulnerable, by sharing some of your story, by sharing some of the past and what made you, make you who you are. You didn't get here overnight. Um, all the different hurdles, whether or not it was through school that I encountered, being a Haitian immigrant here, the different things that I had to deal with coming from a different culture, you have to open up because your story, as I mentioned to you before, is not meant for you. Correct. I love that. So hear what she said. Your story is not meant for you. Right. So it may be your story, but if you don't share it, yes. You're not making, first of all, you're making an impact on other people, but I'm gonna promise you that it's cathartic for you, meaning it's healing. It right. is a good thing I'm for so you to good. share. And I want people to get inside that vulnerability that we've been taught not to have. Mm -hmm. We've been taught not to share the things that I think we should be sharing all the time. Now, I wanna go real quick, because I get comments on this all the time. I'm not saying I need you to tell me all of your dirty <laughs> laundry on Facebook. <laughs> There is a difference between the insanity that some people post right. on Facebook right. and true vulnerability and sharing. Yes. 
And I think you have to figure out how to identify that in your life. But I promise you, if you can figure it out and you can be positive about it, it's gotta be, there's gotta be some positivity. There has to be, you have to show your vulnerability, but you also don't have to blame people. That's my other thing. Oh my gosh, Stop yes. with the blame game yes. on social media. Yes. Just, if you wanna talk about your feelings, what you're going through, yes. that is so much more powerful Absolutely. than you blaming somebody else for all of the things that you're going Absolutely. through. Absolutely. I'm so glad you mentioned that because it, we in the social media world where people feel as though whatever is say, I have no one else around me to, to police me or to tell me I can't say, I have this whole freedom and they forget that they're actually selling themselves. Correct. So I have this wonderful button on Facebook. Oh. It's called Hide You for 30 Days. Oh, I'm not trying that. Instead of unfriending you because for the 900th time you've told me your dirty laundry, mm. that is not positive. It's not you just expressing your vulnerability. It's you <laughs> airing your really dirty laundry and tagging people. Mm. I can hide you for 30 days. Mm. And if 30 days doesn't work, then that's going to be an unfriend. And I think we need to get out of allowing that negativity in our lives. Yes. Because whether you believe it or not, that social media impact, um, when you're sharing yourself on social media is different than when you're sharing your dirty laundry. And it impact, if you have that in your life all the time, the negativity, right. even on social media, even if it's not your story, yes. it can impact your mood, your Absolutely. psyche. Uh, the, if you're a, an attraction person, I'm a Christian attraction person. So anything that you're doing like that, mm -hmm. you really, really have to watch who you're surrounding yourself with. Yes, yes, energy, safeguard that energy. Safeguard the energy, Everything Absolutely. that you have. All right, so why, what do you think the future is of inclusion? Because um, we have a lot going on in the world. I feel like we've made a lot of progress. Mm. Um, I know there's a lot of negativity. What's up, Brian? Hey, Brian. I love Brian. Um, we have a lot of neg negative things that go on. You're, you're bombarded with them, not just on social media. Yes. But, you know, I always have to call to task our news outlets that everything is so negative all the time. Mm. Uh, but inclusion... Uh, I think there are ways for us to be better about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're, when, what do you want to see coming up? What can we change? What can we do yeah. uh, in our lives? Even small things yeah. uh, to make us more inclusive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, one of the things that I do share a lot in my circle is the tunnel vision factor. So use that, try to incorporate it into your day to day um, because you can only be the one to do that. No one else will be able to do it for you. There, there is a lot, a lot. There are a lot of noise happening, right? Yes. A lot of it. It's coming from everywhere. Um, even as an entrepreneur, you, you're feeling as it's never enough. It's always chasing, 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 and nonstop. So, I know. <laughs> Did so. you see his face? He almost died. We love you, Daniel, but oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> so, with that, you have to take some time. So what I do myself is at least 15 minutes a day, at least. I pull myself from all my duties, my family, the work, everything else that, that, that are my tasks to do, and I go to a quiet place. I find a quiet place, I either pray, meditate, just finding that 15 minutes to myself to allow myself to think and process whatever's going on. It's so, so, so important. And I that agree. gets incorporated to how I show up for my clients, to the community that I serve, and just being a better person. So you have to do that. Please. And that can be part of your prep work. Yes. You prep for every meeting. You prepare the graphs and the charts right. and the information. But if you aren't prepped mentally, soulfully, heartfully, right. yes. then you're going into a meeting and a presentation. Mm -hmm. You're not 100% fully prepared. Oh. I, I want you to know that you should be doing things that are more in internal things right. that are are good for your mind and your body and your soul yes. because when you go in there they feel that energy i'm telling you you can go in and be completely prepared and still not get that deal still not make that accomplishment that you hope to make because yes. your energy is way off you're not in awesome. sync with what's going perfect, on perfect perfect and to answer the other question you just yes. said regarding how, what would I wish to see happening, right? Um, so when it comes to inclusion, we, we, we learn to understand what it is and we feel good about ourselves when we allow people to come in, sit at a table, whatever it may be. 
But the step that I would love to see that more, more of us will do and be conscious about doing it is be open to see other side of individuals that you do business with. Allow them to show interest, passion. I'm an entrepreneur, but my two of my passions are health and education. Right. So yearly, I put together a, a health and wellness event for women. Sorry, guys, but I do it for the ladies just to help them to to unplug, come and get some exercise, get some information from a from a trainer, from a chef, a nutritionist. Just pull into yourself yes. over and over and then you become a better person you'll be able to be a better you know individual to be able to do that much of a, of a bigger impact on people that you deal with i love it all right so we're going to share all of mj slash marlene's <laughs> contact information Yes. How you can reach out to her, how you can learn more information about MJ Solutions. Mm -hmm. um, she's open, obviously open, vulnerable, authentic. So if you have a question, if you've been moved, uh, if any, any questions you have, of course, you can always reach out to me. But we bring on amazing people like Marlene so that you yeah. can reach out to them as yeah. well. So we'll share that after the show. All right. Any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you want to share before we head out? I would say to people, just do your best. Take the step to actually be, know what it means to belong. Know, know what those words mean. Be authentic. Push yourself to the maximum. Know that you are on this earth for a purpose, whether in being for the clients that you deal with, the, your friend circle, your family circle, and whatever your background is. Um, if you didn't, when raised here, or if you are from a different country, and the hurdles don't have to actually stop that. You know that there are opportunities. Believe in yourself, invest in yourself, and you'll be able to be that much better. Beautiful. Yes. Oh my God, that was so good. So it went fast, right? You were yes, excellent. Thank you so much Thank for sharing you. your vulnerability you. there and your authenticity. Yes. Look, if you've been touched or moved by this, reach out to Marlene. Uh, reach out to me and I'll get you in touch with Marlene. I love it when we have guests on that talk about inclusion, that give their story, which you did. Remember, you guys can take the leap. I know sometimes it's scary, but um, we have people who have gone before you and trust me, it can work. Yes. Uh, but having a sense of um, where you want to be and having some sort of support system mm -hmm. can be super big. And that's what we're here for. We want to be part of your support system. So um, we appreciate you guys. Happy Friday. Tomorrow's my 28th wedding anniversary. So I have to give a Ooh. shout out to my wife. 28 years married to me. I'm sure that's 900 in 10 years. <laughs> uh, but uh, I love you. And I will talk to you guys later. Ciao. Mwah. Ciao. Have a great weekend.